Hey Trails Collective, Ian here with the long course review of the Topo Ultra Venture Pro. I wanna run with you. Let's take you into some of the specs of the Ultra Venture uh, Pro. So, the uh, stack heights. So, uh, the Ortholite insole. Let's start from the top down in the stack heights. Uh, Ortholite insole comes in at uh, five millimeters. The uh, lasting of the shoe, which you can see on the inside, and all of Topo shoes, I think, at least their trail shoes, are board uh, lasted. And so you can see some of that lasting in here. They have a kind of a honeycomb or a perforated top cushion, which is fairly unique uh, to, I think, this model. I don't think I've seen that design in any others, uh, but that's roughly four millimeters in the lasting. The midsole comes in at about 14 millimeters, at least when I'm trying to uh, do the math. The base rubber, which is the rubber uh, beneath the lugs and connecting to the midsole, uh, is about two millimeters. And then the lug depth uh, here is about five millimeters. Cumulative stack height is 30 millimeters high in the heel, 25 in the forefoot. The weight comes in at 10.4 ounces for men's size 9 and 8.2 ounces for women's size 7. And the uh, price, $145. So let's get into some of the uh, materials and the shoe. Let's start with the, let's take it from the bottom up. So the outsole. Outsole that they're using is a uh, known and I think trusted basically compound. It was something that phone, the founder, uh, Tony Post of Topo, worked prior for uh, Vibram, and he was the one behind the Vibram five fingered toed shoes. And so when he left and started his own brand, several of the trail models retained the use of that Vibram outsole, something I think he's known and trusted. Uh, in this case, it's Mega Grip uh, for them as per. Purported, purported rather to offer exceptional durability and traction or stickiness, particularly in wet conditions. The lug pattern is relatively uh, unremarkable, though in a good way. And I'm going to, I guess, comment on the performance pieces here uh, on top of that materials and design. So the Mega Grip, as I've uh, mentioned, is a pretty well known outsole compound. In my experience, it's probably been one of the more durable outsole compounds on the market. Probably second only, second only to Innovate's uh, Graphene, which I think probably is stickier and more durable than the Vibra Mega Grip. Probably similar to, uh, or kind of splitting hairs with Solomon's uh, Contra Grip uh, outsole material here. Contra Grip probably is a little bit stickier in my opinion in wet conditions, but the Vibra Mega Grip is probably a little bit more durable. Something that you do notice with the, uh, just how hard the Vibra Mega Grip is, uh, when you are running on hard pack, you can really, uh, you get more of like a clomp or, or clop sound, I guess. You can just tell that it's just a harder compound. Uh, traction, as I mentioned, is pretty decent. The out, outsole lug configuration, as I mentioned, unremarkable in the sense that it's either rhomboid or like a chevron pattern. The having the basically faces in the back allows you to really claw back on a sense. And then when you're descending, you hit those ridges uh, going downhill and allows you to, or it gives you basically a little bit more friction and traction uh, on the descent. The lugs are spaced out pretty, uh, pretty wide berth, I guess, between the lugs, which is pretty effective in keeping debris uh, or mud from really building up in there. I think one of the reviewers in one of the established sites, uh, might have been Jeff Beck, uh, had the experience of getting some granular, it looked like maybe clayish mud uh, stuck up in there, but in my experience it sheds it pretty well and I haven't had any issues. The flex grooves here are fairly minimal and this will tie into what I'll talk about in terms of the stiffness of the shoe. So while they do uh, cross over the shoe, you're not getting a ton of flex uh, relatively through your metatarsals and definitely not getting a ton of splay variable. The outsole rubber here in the heel does have a flex groove uh, around the heel counter and I'll use that as a segue into the midsole material. So the midsole material they're using a proprietary blend uh, which is called zip foam. The zip foam has a um, basically a firmer ride. 
Uh, I haven't been a huge fan of it. Uh, it is fairly responsive. It's fairly lightweight. Uh, but I just, I don't know, I haven't, I haven't loved it. I am running currently uh, in the Ultrafly, which is a lighter, a little bit lighter weight, more flexible package. I probably appreciate the zip foam in this one a little bit more uh, than I do in a fairly rigid package in the uh, Ultra Venture Pro. The, uh, but in any case, that flex grooves allowed you to go into the first density, which is the softer density right around the heel counter. And so for any of you who are heel striking out there, you do get some noticeable flex. Uh, on the inside of the shoe or the medial side, you get a harder density of the zip foam. And that just acts as a light stability post, probably more akin in design to a traditional pronation control shoe. And typically you don't necessarily find that in a trail shoe just because the terrain is requiring the foot to be in all sorts of different planes and you're not necessarily getting the same uh, pure, I guess, uh, over pronation issue that you might in a repetitive uh, road motion. And then they have a third blend in the forefoot, um, which I don't know much about that blend. They term the whole uh, compound or I guess combination of those three as balanced. Um, so I don't know, that's probably somewhere in between. Uh, the, uh, but that would be the midsole. And so the combination of that zip foam with the, uh, so this is an ESS rock plate that's exposed. ESS stands for enhanced surface uh, stability, I believe. And it's basically an unexpanded vinyl. Uh, so a, a plastic that's in there that's inlaid between the outsole and the midsole. So when you take the fairly hard outsole rubber of Vibram, you pair it with the ESS rock plate in there, paired with a fairly firmer midsole foam in the uh, zip foam, it creates a really firm chassis. And so underfoot, you really feel that in your first steps. The uh, midsole material that's here, the zip foam, does have a fairly low compression set, so the durability is actually pretty good. And I have had good experience, and I think I can attest to uh, it's pretty decent. It probably uh, doesn't have quite as good a compression set as some of the other I guess newer ones are kind of where the bar is being set in the market. Uh, this one here is a uh, Brooks Hyperion Tempo. It's probably one of my favorite, if not my favorite road shoe of 2020, just ahead of that Ultrafly 3. I'm getting a better compression set out of the, um, the DNA flash material here in terms of compression and being a little bit more durable. Uh, but the zip foam is pretty decent and probably better than a traditional EVA. But you put all those three, three things together and you get a really rigid or stiff chassis. And so what it allows the shoe to do is take shots uh, out on the trail. Uh, but the trade-off is it's stiff. And so the shoe, because it doesn't flex as readily as some of the others, I find my uh, foot or uh, ankle having to accommodate on the inside uh, when I do take those shots. And so if we extend up from the uh, midsole into the upper, uh, the uh, connection point would be a rubberized toe guard, which wraps uh, toward the midfoot. Pretty good for uh, taking abrasion from uh, rocks uh, in passing and just for the durability. But um, yeah, it, it's actually, it works pretty well and also pretty malleable. One of the things that you'll see and which is I think present in all of Topo's trail shoes is they have perforations on the inside and that's to aid with drainage. Uh, one of the uh, pieces, though, that I feel like that um, is negated by uh, is the ortholite insole. So Topo uses ortholite insoles, I think, in most of their, uh, at least, I think all of their trail shoes. I think it's needed in the sense of some of their trail shoes, particularly in a model like this, the Ultra Venture Pro, is fairly stiff or firm underfoot. Uh, and this adds uh, five millimeters of extra and kind of needed cushioning. The trade-off though, and, and which I think is appropriate to mention here, and which I've mentioned it in other reviews, including the uh, Mountain Racer, uh, is unfortunately the ortholite uh, is, seems like fairly open cell foam, and it acts as a sponge. So in my initial testing in the, um, both the MT3, which I, didn't feel like it really warranted its own review. Uh, I thought it was a decent shoe, but not really exceptional in any one thing. Uh, both the MT3 as well as the Mountain Racer, in my submersions or creek crossings, as I uh, exit basically the creek on the opposite side, I start hearing a piston, piston sound. 
And at first I just didn't really know where it was coming from, whether it was water that was actually pumping through those vents there or really what it was. And what I traced it back to being uh, was the ortholite insole. And literally one of the days I came in uh, with the shoes pretty drenched, set them um, in the shop, took the insoles out to dry, did a full work day of like eight hours, uh, came back and the ortholite insole was still chock full of water. And I could just basically crinkle it, up, crinkle it up like a sponge. And so after creek crossing, in my experience, I'm listening to kind of that water in the shoe kind of sponging around for literally a couple miles after the crossing. So um, really comfortable, uh, adds another layer of cushion. Uh, but for all of you who are in and out of creek crossings on regular runs or in certain events, just be aware of that and you may want to swap that out for a different insole. Uh, as you get to the rear of the shoe, they have a TPU overlay here or counter, and that adds some rigidity and stability to the heel of the shoe. Also uh, is another point of stability to keep the foot basically over uh, the uh, midsole and within the shoe. Uh, it has two loops in the back for a Topo's uh, signature uh, gaiter and that pairs with a D-ring at the base of the laces in the front to anchor in uh, that gaiter there. Uh, it has a uh, fairly traditional padded heel collar, which I think is nice in coming up and around the Achilles. And then that goes into a fairly traditional uh, padded uh, tongue here. The tongue has uh, two points of elasticized webbing on either side. Uh, that. Uh, has two parts to both uh, assisting in keeping debris out that may slip down in the vamp of the shoe, uh, but also aids in keeping the tongue uh, in place. In the front of the tongue, there's also an added two lace loops, which you can see uh, right there. And they also aid in keeping the tongue from slipping uh, one side or the other. And that takes you into the, just the upper. So in some of my initial runs out, I was really seeing what it could do over uh, fairly technical terrain. And this is, um, what I was looking for was the basically uh, pitches over a, a rooted network. And what I found that the, uh, the outsole and the traction uh, of the shoe would hold well on, uh, I think this was like a 45 to 50 degree uh, pitch slope. Uh, I felt pretty confident in it. But when I took it onto an off-camber surface or trying to bank, my foot would start swimming uh, in the upper right out of the box. And uh, I, I think I'll play a clip here where I was pushing down and just feeling really some excessive motion there. I did uh, shortly after uh, that clip play with the upper a bit and I just basically cranked down uh, the laces more than I would typically. Uh, and that did secure my foot uh, on those off-camber pitch surfaces but I felt like it then cinched the upper a little bit too like snugly or aggressively. And so I was having a tough time really feeling like I could just dial in the upper. And I think that this was something that has been echoed in some of the other initial reviews that are out there. Because the shoe has a fairly stiff uh, chassis uh, paired with a lot of volume, particularly in the upper, uh, you end up basically torquing in the shoe and that ends up just popping, I think, in the heel. One of the models, like the Mountain Racer, uh, has um, heavier uh, welded or lamination points down on the outside, which does, I think, a fairly good job, even in this ripstop, ripstop nylon, of holding the foot over the base. The uh, Ultra Venture Pro has some of those um, darker or laminated pieces, but it really just seems like it's more aesthetic rather than functional here. Uh, as I really, again, have a tough time feeling like the shoe holds you uh, over the upper. And so I feel like that's something that should be improved if the, if the model carries uh, forward into uh, a round two. Um, one of the reviewers just commented on being a water resistant uh, upper. And I'm really disagreeing with that. I did a quick water test on it, which I'll uh, plug here and just pouring some of the water over. And the material soaks up that water fairly quickly. Uh, and so I don't know if I'm on board with that um, having much water resistance to that upper. Uh, but you can experience it for yourself if you get a pair. So uh, this uh, full combination, uh, who it comes in for. It's going to be somebody who's looking for a fairly uh, wide toe box, 
uh, is good with a uh, lower heel to toe ratio and really wants a firm protected platform. For those who are uh, probably in a dedicated trail running space where this is just a dedicated trail runner, you're probably going to be uh, more comfortable in either the Topo Ultra Venture. This is the model for 2020. It's getting updated in February of 2021. We're excited to try that. <clears throat> uh, or the Mountain Racers, as long as it's a, a, around in the line. Uh, Ultra Venture is going to be, and all of them, and it's interesting in their lineup, all have really similar heel-to-toe ratios or stack heights, and stack heights, rather. <clears throat> so it's interesting that they have three shoes that are so very close in specs that have pretty different rides. For somebody looking for uh, just a really more cushioned underfoot feel, uh, it's going to be your Ultra Venture. Somebody who wants a little bit uh, firmer, more responsive underfoot feel, a little bit more protection underfoot, going to go with the Topo Mountain Racer. Um, also, I think the lightest of the three. Uh, those looking for a really just protected underfoot feel, uh, it's going to be the Ultra Venture Pro. And this speaks to, I think, who the shoe is really targeted for. So in 2000, late 2019, um, Topo uh, secured an account or opened an account with REI. And that's a, that was a huge, I think, uh, win for them. REI just being a huge uh, nationwide retailer is really dominant in the outdoor and recreation space. Um, I had just wondered, um, I, guess, I guess, how that would go for the brand. And uh, as I was running this and putting in some test miles, I was thinking on who this shoe was really, I think, designed for. And in the prior couple days before filming here, Topo's ad started coming across my uh, Facebook page. And their ad set was basically, it has the image, actually I'll plug it. Uh, it has the image of, uh, looks like a couple day hikers. One of them stepping up onto what looks like a fairly uh, sharp rock. And I think that's it there with an image. The words that go with it in the paragraph next to it is uh, trek, hike, or run in the ultimate performance hybrid. And so with, I think, REI opening them and, and knowing, I think, where this could fall, uh, I think that they, uh, they totally nailed it. I think it's that um, at more that athleisure market, somebody who's looking for a shoe that can do it all, going from a sturdy hiking shoe to a run on occasion and everything in between. Uh, somebody looking for that, I think you found maybe a new best friend in this Ultra Venture Pro. Uh, but again, uh, whether that's the dedicated run space, you know, I don't know. Uh, but I think Topo's done well in, I think, understanding who this is maybe uh, designed for and targeting the advertising uh, appropriately. So uh, I think that's really the, the rundown and uh, digging in. Uh, let us know if you have any questions. Uh, we've got it here. Uh, if you have a local retailer you really appreciate, uh, reach out to them first, see if they can get it for you. Uh, if not, reach out to us. We'd really appreciate the support and business. If you have any questions about it, uh, let us know. If you find me at a race out on a trail run, I'm wearing it. We'll swap shoes, let you take it for some runs. And uh, we really appreciate you tuning in. So, all right. So for this round, Topo Ultra Venture Pro. Uh, Topo, thanks for putting out another pretty cool model. And we will catch you all in the next round. See ya!